don't put your guinea pig around other guinea pigs when it has a parasite. Hello and welcome back to Squeak Life. Today we are talking about guinea pig illnesses. We are going to talk about the most common illnesses, how they are caused and treated, what signs to look for, and what to always have on hand in case these illnesses occur. The most common illnesses that guinea pigs get are respiratory infections, urinary infections, scurvy, which is vitamin C deficiency, parasites, and abscesses, which are usually caused from an infected wound. Luckily for you guys, I have had guinea pigs that have had all of these illnesses, so I can let you in from my firsthand experience on what to look for and what to do when your guinea pig gets sick. So first thing I wanna let you know, a little disclaimer, I am in no way a veterinarian, so my advice is exactly that, it's advice. I suggest that you always go to a vet. If something is weird with your guinea pig and you're even Googling, how do I know if my guinea pig is sick or is my guinea pig sick? Most likely your guinea pig is sick. Please do your guinea pig and yourself a favor um, and take it to the, to the vet before things get worse. I forgot to mention here that if you have multiple guinea pigs living together, you should have a separate cage so that in case one gets sick, you can separate the guinea pig from the others to prevent the illness from spreading. Let's first start off with respiratory infection as this is the most, I would say the most common um, illness I, I come across with people who ask me for advice on sick guinea pigs because um, it's very easy for it to happen to guinea pigs. So respiratory infections are usually caused by your guinea pig getting cold. This can be caused by wet bedding or if you leave the window open and there's a draft. Those are both things that can cause a respiratory infection. So you want to make sure that your guinea pig is staying nice and warm and dry in their cage. So some signs to look for. First of all, um, I could tell that Oreo had a respiratory infection. Uh, because of the sound of her breathing. I will input a sound clip of what that sounded like right here. As you can tell, her breathing sounds really weird. It's a strange clicking sound um, and it sounds very labored. Um, and that's because she had mucus in her lungs and she was trying to get it out. So um, that is one sound to look for in your guinea pig. Um, another thing, which luckily she didn't get to this stage, but it did with Fabio, um, I started to notice he had a crusty nose and crusty eyes, um, like he had mucus coming out of his eyes and nose. So that's another thing to look out for with respiratory infections. And then finally, how you know when it's getting serious is that um, Fabio stopped eating. He wasn't interested in food. Um, I had taken him to a vet, but he was misdiagnosed with um, back pain rather than a respiratory infection. And so unfortunately, he did pass away from the respiratory infection, which is why I really, really want to stress that if you have any inkling in your body that your guinea pig might have a respiratory infection, please, please, please take him to the vet. Because um, guinea pigs descend really fast when they get sick. As they are prey animals, they don't want to display openly for predators that they are sick, which makes them an easy target. So they won't display signs of them being sick until it's pretty dire. If your guinea pig isn't eating, this is a very, very big sign that they aren't feeling well, and you should get to the vet immediately, like as soon as possible, because once a guinea pig stops eating, their digestive system actually starts to shut down. Their organs literally shut down because it needs to have food constantly in it since it's so complex. It's very, very important that if you notice your guinea pig is not eating, to get them to the vet as soon as you possibly can get them there. I'm probably going to say this at least a million times in this video. To treat a respiratory infection, you will take your guinea pig to the vet and they will give them an antibiotic. For Oreo, her antibiotic actually made her lose appetite, so she stopped eating. She was not interested in food whatsoever. Um, luckily, I caught it early on, and so I was able to um, feed her some critical care, which is my first tool to have on hand at all times just in case any kind of illness occurs. So critical care looks like this. Bunny! Critical care. As you can see it has a prescription label on it because I got this from my vet. Um, I will look in to see if it's available online on Amazon. I'm about 99% sure that it is. If it is I will make sure to link it below. So all this is is it's a little powder. This one is supposed to <laughs> It's supposed to be apple banana flavored, but honestly, it just smells like hay. It's like a powdered hay pellet mix, um, except it's better than pellets because it has like 
100% of their vitamin C and iron and all kinds of good nutrients that they need. So how this works, you, you read the directions, but pretty much you mix the dry mix with some water and then you put it in a syringe. This is a really big one. I couldn't find a small one, but you put it in a syringe and you feed the guinea pig the food. So um, I noticed that with Oreo, what actually started to happen was she was losing fur on her leg. And that's how I knew she was not actually eating because I wasn't 100% sure whether or not she was eating any of her hay or pellets. Because there were some left over, but I didn't know if she was eating it at all. But when I noticed that her fur was coming off of her leg, that is a sign of the next illness we're going to talk about, which is scurvy. So scurvy is when your guinea pig has a lack of vitamin C. You've probably heard of scurvy in the context of pirates because um, since pirates are out at sea all the time, they weren't getting vitamin C from their diet and so they would do things like take lemons and limes on the boat and eat them and that's how they would get their vitamin C and not have scurvy and die. So that's usually probably the context you've heard of scurvy. For guinea pigs, um, they are similar in, to humans in that they do not produce their own vitamin C so they have to get it 100% from their diet, from fresh fruits and vegetables or if you choose to supplement with a pellet you can get it from that as well. If people um, choose to put the vitamin C drops in the water I personally don't recommend doing that because for one thing it makes the water taste weird and so then it might cause your guinea pig to just not drink water and for another thing it also tends to have other vitamins in it like calcium and things like that and that can actually cause stones for your guinea pigs. So I personally just prefer to feed them lots of fresh fruit and vegetables and supplement with a pellet. As I told you, Oreo started to develop scurvy which I noticed because her fur was falling off her leg so that's why I fed her the critical care. This got her all the nutrients she needed. Um, her fur continued to fall off while I was feeding her this just to let you know. So I was still a little scared, um, but I knew that once she was off the antibiotics, she would most likely get her appetite back. And sure enough, she did. So that worked out really well. Um, and she, her fur grew back. She has a beautiful, nice furry leg now. Um, my other experience was with Miss Piggy. I will input a picture here of what Miss Piggy looked like when we picked her up. Piggy was actually a pink guinea pig, not a white guinea pig. And she was pink because she had severe scurvy. Now I did take her to the vet because if they're losing fur and they have bald patches, that can also be a sign of parasites. And obviously if Miss Piggy had mites or some gross parasite like that, I would not want to bring her home and um, expose her to all of my guinea pigs. So we took her to the vet. Sure enough, it was scurvy. All we had to do was put her on a regular diet and she was fine. If you are experiencing scurvy with your guinea pig where you notice their fur is falling out, um, first analyze their diet. Are you feeding them enough uh, fruits and vegetables? Are you feeding them enough pellets and hay and all the things that they need? But if you're feeding them all the right things and they're still losing fur, it's likely a sign that they aren't eating and they need medical attention. So if your guinea pig is losing fur, take it into the vet. Because speaking of losing fur, the next thing we're gonna talk about is parasites. So you wanna take your guinea pig to the vet if their fur is falling out because you wanna make sure that it's scurvy or parasites. Very different things. So with parasites, I had experience with this with my guinea pig, Pedro. He actually had ringworm. And yes, he gave me ringworm. Cause I didn't know that he had ringworm, so of course I was cuddling him. And then one day my fiance noticed that I was getting a rash and I told him, oh, it's just a rash, you know, it's nothing. But then it started to form a ring and I realized that it was ringworm. So yes, that is my disgusting guinea pig story of the day for you. So I took him to the vet. They found out that it was ringworm. Both he and Pablo needed to be treated for it. And we put them in quarantine. We tried to put them in a different area from the rest of the guinea pigs just because I didn't want to mix bedding and things like that and risk everyone else getting it. We needed to actually squirt a spray on them. And at the time, Pedro was so sensitive from the ringworm all over his body that he wouldn't let you touch him, which also you don't want to touch him because he has ringworm. But um, so we had to corner him and spray him every day and that wasn't fun. Also, a guinea pig will take an antibiotic and his happened to be banana flavored and banana is Pedro's least favorite thing in the entire world. So he would literally turn his nose up and make faces whenever I tried to give him his antibiotic. That's typical of what will happen with um, any kind of parasite. They'll give you an antibiotic, they'll give you some kind of topical medication for your guinea pig. Some things to look for 
to see if your guinea pig has a parasite. Like I mentioned, first thing, if they're losing fur. Second thing, which is most obvious, if they're scratching. Pedro was nonstop scratching all the time, so I knew there was something wrong with him. And third, if you notice that your guinea pig is incredibly irritable and doesn't like to be picked up and is nipping you and seems to have an attitude, then that's another sign that they could have parasites because obviously if there's little insects biting them or something growing on them, they're not gonna really wanna have their skin touched. Um, so this is something that happened with Pedro. He was an incredibly irritable guinea pig. And once we got him treated, he started being a little bit nicer, wasn't as nippy. Oh, and a little backstory about Pedro. Um, he actually got ringworm because we rescued him from a mill, from a guinea pig mill. So uh, parasites are very common if you get a guinea pig from the pet store. Parasites are very common because it'll start with one guinea pig and obviously they're all living together. And so then it'll spread across all the guinea pigs. So that's where he got it from. Uh, Fabio actually also got a parasite. He got mites. Yeah, he got mites. And that was because we had to take him to the hospital to get his, uh, he had a lump that needed to be removed. And while he was at the hospital, he picked up mites from some nice cat or dog that wanted to share their parasite with him. Those are just some common, common places where parasites can come from. So that is all I have to say about parasites. Let's move on to the next one, which is going to be abscesses. Oh, this is a good one. Okay, I'm looking over here because... This is where we have another handy dandy tool to have in your tool chest for if your guinea pig gets bit or scratched or anything like that. We have Veterisin Plus Wound and Skin Care. It looks like this. This you can definitely get on Amazon. I think it's about $13 um, and it's just a wound spray. This is miracle stuff. Okay, so this will help you prevent ever getting an abscess wound. If you notice that your guinea pig suddenly has a wound, definitely take them into the vet to get it checked out. But I would also suggest getting this so that until you can take them to the vet, you can spray this on it. If you happen to have a skinny pig, which is a hairless guinea pig, I would suggest instead of using the veterinarian because it can be a little harsh on their skin, to instead use coconut oil, which I'm sure you, all you skinny pig owners already know. Um, this is also a good alternative for regular guinea pigs too. If you notice they're getting dry skin or anything like that, always have some coconut oil on hand. This is just the regular, um, I got the refined. I forget why I got refined, but I looked it up on the internet and decided to get re refined. It's so just refined coconut oil. Um, I rub this on my skinny pig to make sure his skin is nice and moisturized, but you can also put this on wounds and that kind of thing because if the guinea pigs lick it off, then it's it won't make them sick but if you like don't put human treatments on guinea pig wounds so going into abscesses <laughs> an abscess is um, a lump of pus that forms under the skin from a bite and so Pablo developed one because he and Pedro suddenly decided they didn't want to be friends anymore and Pedro bit him in the face and it got incredibly infected. I should mention here that if you notice your guinea pigs are fighting or have bite wounds, you should separate them immediately to prevent any further injury. We went in and got this lump drained. It would fill up again and get drained and fill up again and get drained. And then finally that's when the vet said, oh, by the way, you can try this veteris and stuff. And that's when we went and tried it and it worked like a gem. Signs to look for. You should be picking your guinea pig up regularly to to be checking them out and making sure everything's okay. So if you're, while you're doing that, you notice that they have a little bite or something like that, or they're forming a little lump, definitely get that checked out because sometimes it can be a tumor, not an abscess wound. There's my advice on that. Next. Okay, our final common illness we're gonna talk about today is the urinary infection. So I actually haven't had any guinea pig with urinary infection, but I have had them with bladder stones and they got bladder stones from their food, from their pellets. So I mentioned this on my website, on my resources page, which is that I used to use the cheap pellets because they're cheap, um, the just the plain pellets, and they were like $8 or something like that. They were very cheap. Um, but one day I was researching guinea pig health stuff and noticed that people were mentioning that the cheap pellets are usually alfalfa hay based and alfalfa hay has a higher calcium content which is why you feed it to pregnant and young guinea pigs um, while they're growing or have other guinea pigs growing inside of them. For a normal guinea pig though, they don't need that much calcium. 
So you want to make sure that your pellet is Timothy hay based and that's how you can prevent bladder stones. I knew my guinea pigs had bladder stones because I noticed that there was blood in the cage from their urine and I freaked out, looked on the internet and saw that it was most likely from their food, decided to change the pellets and it healed up so they no longer had any blood in their urine. Which also my side note is to not feed a guinea pig more than one eighth cup of pellets a day. Um, of course, if you see blood in their urine and you have them on the right pellets, you should take them to the vet immediately to get the issue addressed. One last thing to ha always have on hand and to be using weekly is a scale. You can just use a regular food scale. Um, you can find them on Amazon. I will confess, this is my guinea pig confession of the day, that I currently don't own a scale. However, I do have it on my wedding registry since I'm getting married in two months. And you know, everyone thinks that I'm using it to measure rice, but really... I'll make sure to link my resources page down below. It has a care guide, which will have more information on the different illnesses and what to look for. In addition to that, it also has some suggestions for vets that are in the Southern California area in case you live here like I do. If you do not and you do need to take your guinea pig to the vet, please make sure that your vet sees guinea pigs before you go in. Guinea pigs are considered exotic animals, so not every vet will see them. Um, so you can't go to a typical cat and dog veterinarian on the street. You have to make sure that they see guinea pigs. I hope that you liked this video and found it helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button below if you'd like to see more guinea pig tips or to see the cute adoption videos. Also, if you have any further questions about this topic or if you have any suggestions for future videos, please include that in the comment section below. I hope you have a squeak day and I'll see you next time.